music, you know, helped me move to Atlanta. So it was like all them factors kind of like played a big part. But, you know what I mean, like my pops, you know, seeing I was really working, you know, every day, you know what I mean? Mm. Sleeping at the studio, you know, I might come home for four hours, take a shower, and I'm going right back to the studio. So it was shit that, you know what I mean? You just got to really be dedicated, though. Because you're really going in blind. You don't know if it's going to work. Mm. I don't care how good the music is, you feel me? The people got to choose. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you're suffering from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like, every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. The thing I like most about your uh, your story is I think you ain't really get no real buzz until like five years after, right? After you started making beats. Ten. Ten? That's fire. <laughs> Ten, for sure. Do you under... Like, you can pull your mic up. Do you... Do you um, only reason I say that's fire, cause like, bro, in the land full of, in the world full of Instagram and microwaves and shit like that, it's like everybody thinks I'm supposed to come overnight. Nah, it ain't gonna happen like so that. So the fact you was really grinding for ten years and you ain't quit, that means a lot, bro. It's not a lot of though. I don't see a lot of those stories, and I feel like it's more of those stories out here. But even those stories, they try to like, they try to hide it. Yeah, sweeping under the rug so people won't know, th so they can, so people can think they. They made it in, in the shorter time that they made it. I think it's like what make it worth it, though. What? Yes. Just like looking back at, like, you know, all the shit that I went through, like, not having no money, uh, not knowing if it was going to work, previous artists before G. Like, it's a whole bunch. You know what I mean? To go with it. That shit, it, it's kind of like, <laughs> I don't understand this either. Industry ages, ages. Yeah. Bro, like, bro, I love my age. I tell people all the time, nigga, like, they be... Taking years off their life, like, nah, I'm blessed. You I'm crazy. Straight. You feel me? Like, that's what made the journey what it is now, for real. Nigga, yes, nigga. Yes, I'm I'm 31. Yeah. I just you niggas, man. Uh, appreciate it, fellas. Oh, man. Yeah, man. Yo, I just wanted to say, um, again, we hear the tags and and everything, and we just we just know you from your beats. Yeah. And so, like, I saw you at the event. I'm like, I want to interview you. I started to do the uh, the research, and I'm like, it it really made me a fan of you though. Like, I honestly, appreciate it, bro. For like, real, super humble, and this it was the story for me. Yeah, because my story is a little similar. You <laughs> yeah, know not for sure. Especially in the podcast, and you see everybody turning up overnight, and I don't have no hate or malice in my blood, but you you definitely feel a little uneasy when you see everybody making it in your circle before you. You're like, oh. When is my turn? When is my turn? When is my turn? Yeah. So to hear somebody with a similar story is really dope. So let's get it started. Yo, what's poppin'? You know what time it is? Your boy, Mr. J. Hill is here. J. Hill Podcast. Oh, man. Special guest in the building. I mean, he's taking over the world right now. The streets is going crazy. I mean, every time he drop a beat, you know who it is. Forever Rolling. That shit go crazy. What is that? <laughs> Forever Rolling is in the building. What up, dog? What's up with you, buddy? I know somebody had to ask you this, so it might be redundant, but I'm curious. I want to know. I don't care. Where did it come from? It was just a previous artist I was working with in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Kentucky. really in a, Yeah, it was in a song that he said. You know what I mean? So it was just like uh, in the hook. I just took it out the hook. You changed asked? my name. No, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you get a job for that? Did he nah. sign one of the papers that y'all signed? <laughs> no, nah, for sure. How much he charge you for that? Nothing. I bet he wish he did charge you something now. I mean, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he probably hurt now. Like, oh, it was probably a good story for him to have. Yeah, yeah. Y'all still talk? Mm, you know. Damn. It's unfortunate. Hey, it is what it is. <laughs> Forever rolling, man. I, um... Where did we start? We talked about your story. Yeah. Do you think about that often? How long it took you to, to get it here and, and now that you're finally here? Every day. Mm. What is it that you think about? Shit. 
It almost didn't work, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was, you know, two previous artists before I got with G, so just waiting around, making beats every day, job to job, mm -hmm. not knowing if it's going to work. You know how it is, and especially, you know, small city Louisville, so it ain't really much going on there, so it's just trying to work, trying to get with the artists, trying to get around all the bigger artists, but you know how that shit is. Like, it's super I hard know. to get around these I big artists, bro. Especially in Louisville. Yeah. For sure. It's not going to happen there. That's why I came to Atlanta. Mm. Let's backtrack, man. What does it mean, though? I know you think about it. What does it mean? What is your story in your back? What does that mean to you? you mean? Like, what it means? Mm-hmm. I don't really like think about it that way. I just really just think about like just really just the years like I put in, you know, just so many times I wanted to quit, uh, not having money, job to job, mm. uh, mom and pops be on your back trying to get you to get your job. I'm not going to college. I just always knew I wanted to do the music, so it was just I think just actually making it and knowing this is what I wanted to do. So mm. it's like from the beginning. Like I knew I wanted to do music been me music all my life so hell that's what it mean right there Shit, i'll tell you yeah it mean that like it's motivation bro remember back in a couple years ago meek was running with the campaign motivational purposes only right yeah that's what it mean bro think about it so many kids out there who give up bro there's so many kids out there who ain't gonna wait that 10 years now nah, fact you get what i'm saying it's like bro look man, i this is what I wanted to do, and I stuck it out, and it worked for me. Yeah. That means a lot. <laughs> nah, a lot. I don't for mean to sure, get too deep, sure. but it just is what it is, bro. Yeah, definitely a long journey. I wouldn't change it, though. You know what I mean? Mm, mm, mm. I feel like if I would have got it any faster, I wouldn't, like, appreciate it as much as I do right now. You know? Facts. Yo, another thing that was interesting, though, I mean, we can't we can't erase the support that you had. Like, that's big. You such a mom. Your, your parents, like, allowed you to, like, quit your job, and... And you to kind of like focus on the music. That's huge. It was like the, like a game changer for me. Mm -hmm. It was like I didn't really have to focus on having to get up, go to work. You know what I mean? Be pissed off at the job. Don't want to be there. I ain't have to worry about that. It was just music. You know, helped me move to Atlanta. So it was like all them factors kind of like played a big part. But, you know what I mean? Like my pops, you know, seeing I was really working, you know, every day. You know what I mean? Mm sleeping at the studio you know i might come home for four hours take a shower and i'm going right back to the studio so it's like that you know what i mean you just gotta really be dedicated though because you're really going in blind you don't know if it's gonna work mm. i don't care how good the music is you feel me the people gotta choose mm, mm, mm. it's yo so many times in our community as black people they always say man well i know there's no blueprint to this and it, although it might not be a blueprint but it's it's something, because we got people like you. That's why these platforms are so important, in my opinion, because, like, you could be the determining factor of the new generation parents that yeah. be like, you know what? Nah, I'm going to support my kid. They want to be a rapper. They want to be They want to be a producer. They want to do anything. Like, you know what? Nah, you don't have to get a traditional job. You feel me? Like, stay home. I'm going to support this 100%. A lot of parents not doing that. Yeah. I feel like just they seen it was working, though. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? The views... Uh, and the music was actually good. So, you know, my beats from the beginning, you know, just always been good. They wasn't top tier from the beginning, but I was like I always had like a pretty decent sound. You from day me? one? Yeah, you know what I mean? It was, I've been in music, though, all my life. So mm. uh, playing drums. I was in concert band. Yeah. My mom was in a professional gospel choir that traveled. So, like, all those played a key factor. You feel what I'm saying? Mm. Okay. Did she ever like? <laughs> did she ever judge you for the type of music that she was making, or for the artist that she was making the music for? Nah, nah. Cause I, I mean, mean, they make more. They make more, a lot of people. You got beats for is, is gangsters, or well, that's yeah. what they were saying, right? But but it's like, I mean, like my mom, she she listened to stuff though, especially like back when Wayne was, you know, what I'm saying mixtape era and Carter Three, that type of stuff. You know, what I'm saying mm. like she she bought that album. You feel me? So it was like she she knew listen to rap music. You feel me? So it wasn't like she was just completely just strayed away from it, you know okay. what I mean? She was already in it. Yeah, she was hip, for sure. That's cool. Yo, you said um, it was two art, two art artists before ESTG. And that made me think, um, as a producer, are you looking for that artist 
to like break with your sound and, and, and you create the sound for that artist? Or was when you say two other artists, what is that exactly? What does that mean exactly? It's just artists that I was working with before him. Mm. So we just uh we were just locked in, kinda like kinda the same way that me and G was, but the chemistry just wasn't you know, just wasn't there. So, you know, when I got with G, it was just okay. every time we got together the music, you know, we make four or five songs, you know, maybe more. Other artists, you know, we might make songs here and there, but it just wasn't getting the traction. The, you know what I mean? You know, the first few songs that me and G did, it just immediately caught traction, mm. and especially within the city. So that's how I was like, I right, just got to keep going with it. Before we get to G, though, I'm thinking producer. Well, in my mind, I'm thinking producer. They just make beats for everybody. So when you say I had two <laughs> other artists before G, I'm like, what well, you had to see something in them to lock in with them. Like, how did that even happen? Because usually you just making mu music for everybody, right? Yeah. So it was like. You know how like you, every city got like they popping you know artists yeah. in the city, mm -hmm. so it was just like there was two artists that was like popping in the city you know before bro, and it was a guy named Lamont Graves that just was like the best way to, you know lock in and make an impact as a mm. producer is to lock in with an artist. Mm. So I just I always felt like I'm never gonna get to future at this point right now. You know what I'm saying? It's super early. It's a long shot. Mm. So it's lock in with artists. So I was just trying to create projects create a sound, you know what I mean? Yeah. And at that time, it still didn't know what I was doing. You feel what I'm saying? We're just making beats, bro. It's like not like we really, I was putting projects together, you feel me? Mm. It's making beats, giving the beat off, you know what I mean? It sound similar to like a DJ almost. Cause you know, like a DJ, I would say, a lot of DJs is coming up, their big thing is like find an artist and break an artist. Yeah. Right, you break an artist and you that DJ, you lit. Like that's your, that's what it kind of sound like being a producer. Yeah. I guess you could say that, yeah, yeah. Just minus the just minus the DJ part, but it's like that. But you just really got to put in. I feel like it's a little bit more work though, because, mm. like I said, you, it's a long shot. You don't know if it's gonna work. Mm. You know what I mean? Before bro, you know it didn't it didn't work out. You feel what I mean? So just gotta keep working. What would you say was the special part about G that worked? If you had to pinpoint it, I guess. Just the music. Mm. It wasn't hard to make music. Uh, we did project, the first project we did, done very quick, you feel me? It wasn't like we had to put a, a lot of thought into it. I mean, it wasn't forced. You know, a lot of stuff be forced with artists, you feel me, when you're around artists, you know, the vibe now may be right, and it was just, just never that with bro, you feel me? Mm. And he was rapping at the time, everybody was doing like auto-tune and yeah. all that type of stuff, you feel me? So this was it made me change my style, you feel me? That makes sense. I'm. This is what 2018 or 19. 19. This is what after a boogie. I feel like that era was yeah, that like, like singing era, right? Yeah, like a boogie, Roddy Rich, all that yeah. was when it was popping off. You feel me? Okay. Damn, that make that's actually that's so, crazy. So I'm making beats for them, trying to get beats to them, and when he came around, it just it was like I, I don't rap like this. You feel me? He was on a total different time. So let me ask you this. I was just ha having this conversation, right? And everybody always want to be the next such and such. Yeah. And I feel like you never really make it being the next such and such. Like, it's always something that changed. For example, I had the example of um, Funk Flex. Well, no, not Funk Flex. DJ Clue and DJ Drama. Yeah. Right? DJ Clue was like mixtape DJ, but his mixtapes was like freestyles. DJ Drama and Don Cannon came in, and it was more so making it was like an album and a mixtape it was yeah, all yeah, original yeah. songs if that makes sense yeah yep. and that's why in my opinion that's why dj drama was was so quick to blow up because he wasn't another clue he was a different he was uh, he was dj drama and nobody never saw it yeah same kind of similar to like you know like you making music beats for like people that's tr trying to do the melodic thing and escg come around start spitting which i feel like even when we heard escg it was it wasn't different if made it was nostalgic it was like yeah. this nigga rapping. Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. It, it was a change of that. Nobody, people weren't rapping really. You know what I mean? So I say all that to say, when you, I heard you say when you looking for people to send you like, excuse the verbiage because I, I don't know none of this <laughs> stuff. I'm just letting you know. People, not beats, but like loops and stuff like that. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a certain type of loop you like. Yeah. But knowing this, right? And even, I think you even say, like, if it says, like, an EST type beat, you would take it. But knowing this, though, would you tap into something different? Because that's just the way of life. Like, it always, the change 
the innovation is the one that always hit different. I always like doing it right now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just trying to find a new sound. You feel me? And kind of give it to bro. You know what I'm saying? Give it to you know some of these other big artists that I didn't tapped in with. Mm-hmm. That's what it's about though. Is just trying new stuff and giving it. You know, dishing it out to the artists, seeing if they like it. You know, if they rapping on it. Just keep going with that, you know what I'm saying, with that wave. Mm. That makes sense. Yo, speaking of drama, I ain't even, I ain't do this on purpose, but this is fire. Did you know uh, Generation Now actually missed out on ESTG? I was I was there. I was around. <laughs> <laughs> I know they hurt. <laughs> I know they hurt. <laughs> I was around. I was around. You feel me? All that, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? We was, we was recording a lot of stuff around that time, you know what I mean? So, How was those conversations? And I'm just curious, like, this is some hip-hop stories right here. How was, like, how? What was he thinking? I guess like when when, when y'all was in a situation, was did you have any say so in it? Like was you saying yeah, fuck with him or like? Nah, no, just focus on the music. Mm. I've always been focused on the music. Like that's what's important. That's what got us here. That's Facts. what's gonna keep it going. So just we just both of us though. You know what I mean? I mean I'm pretty sure he was focused on trying to get the deal and all that kind of stuff done, but it was never like it was just like a a big pressure. I was always in conversations brought up. Mm. Even when we was around them, it was music, you know what I mean? We record, you know what I mean? Or he's doing a show or something, you feel me? So it wasn't really like a, a lot of extra going he on. He was CMG, right? Yeah, yeah. Did he, like how far apart was the conversation with Generation Now to when he actually signed with somebody? Generation, that was, so this is middle 2019, end of 20, this is 20, end of 2019, so. 2019 to 2021. 20, so he signed with CMG in 21. Was, yeah, I think it was, yeah, it was 21, 21. So, end of 20. When he's saying no to these deals, you might not be saying, I know you're focusing on music. Yeah, but yeah. Are you thinking, like, damn, like, we could have had a, we could have had, was you thinking that? Not really. I mean, it's, I knew the music was good, so. You knew something was going to come. Of course. Of course. At this point, you know, we're doing, Hundreds of thousands of views, hundreds of thousands, you mm. know, everything we drop, and it's organic. It's no label behind it, so I knew somebody was going to bite. Right. And so when, you know, he got the call from Gotti, you know, I was there for the, for the whole conversation. Now I got it recorded on my phone, you feel me? So, Wait, how did the conversation go, bro? Say, let us know. We want to know. I can say too much, you know what I mean? Why not? But, I mean, what, it's, he signed, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you feel me? They ain't incriminating stuff. No, like, no, no. What happened? Like Nigga, set the feel, story out. Let us know. It just... They were just saying, you know, just like just some real shit, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? But both of them was on the same page. I put it like that, you feel mm. me? It just made everything like ease over. Just put him at ease. Like he was just knew he was going to go with them, you feel me? No, nah, that's hard. Next time, don't tell me you got a story on the phone because that makes me want to hear the damn story. Like, you said I got a story on the phone, nigga. I want to hear the story, nigga. No, for sure, for <laughs> Keep sure. That shit to it was definitely <laughs> crazy for sure, though. That, I mean, it, honestly, it kind of makes perfect sense, though. Yeah, it was like the only, but it was like the only, it just made sense, you feel mm. me, versus like any other label or anybody else, you feel me, just, and what what, what he raps about, how he rap, uh, his demeanor, it just, that was a great fit for him, you feel me? I don't think anybody else would have been able to, like, handle it. So, I was thinking about this, and you can correct me at any time. But I was thinking about this. I was going down your catalog. We got what? All right. Help me out. We got ESTG. We got I Seen the Burner. We seen uh, R- Roddy Rex. I mean, Roddy Rich. Uh, shout out to my guy, Roddy Rex, uh, from Baltimore. But Roddy Rich, right? You got something? Yeah. No? Yeah, no. Nope, not Roddy. No, not Roddy? Nope. I seen C- CEO Trail. Yeah. I seen Trail. That's my guy. I seen uh, All Star JR. These yeah. are the people I've. But it's some bigger ones. Um, Future. But Future was on the burner. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Does that count? Or? Boston. Boston Richie, who else we had? Um, who else? I'm missing. I'm missing a lot. Money bag. Money bag for sure. Uh, baby. Baby. Dirt. Tory Lanez. Uh, yeah. Gotti. Gotti. My question Doug. is, when they getting when they getting these beats, are they looking for a specific sound? Yo, this episode is sponsored by the Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy David Shines. Man, he's probably one of the few people I know who actually built. Multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created the Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. 
And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. My or, sound. Huh? My sound. Your sound? <laughs> No, nah, that's I'm, that's mean, what I'm curious though. Like, no, that's, know, but that's like trapped out, right? Kinda, yeah, I like, mean, yeah, when I hear, yeah, it, yes. it's like yeah and yeah, no, cause like yeah, I got some record with Gotti that's not a trap record. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, I'm not just really just be like sending. If I'm not around, you feel me? If I'm not playing beats, and I'll just be sending beats. You know what I mean? But I think it's like easy when you be playing beats in person. You feel me? Okay. No, I was asking because I was I was just curious, because when I hear ESTG and I hear like all of the trap rappers, I hear that one specific sound. I was wondering like, do you be scared to ever to to get boxed in sometimes? Nah, cause that don't be the only thing I be making. Mm. Like I still make the trap shit. You feel me? But I mean, my manager we got so many beats, bro. You know what I'm saying? Just. You know R and B, or it might be for the melodic, or I got pop type beats. You know, we just I just make music. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Whatever feel good at the moment. So would you say that the trap is the most popular though? Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, that's, what, that's what got me here. Having a variety of beats, right, and, and understanding that you are multifaceted, does it ever get frustrating when people just want the trap shit? Yeah, no, I don't mm -hmm. know, no, because I feel like it's not it's not gonna get old. Mm. You know what I mean? You're still going to try new stuff. And, it's, you know, artists, they they don't always ask for the trap stuff, though. So it's it's getting there, you know what I mean, where they're not always asking for the, just the hard trap shit. Did you ever at one point think about just being tied to somebody else, right? So, like, if hypothetically, was you did you ever have a thought in your mind, like, bro, if ESTG lose it tomorrow, it's not as high as he is tomorrow, then my career kind of go downhill too. You ever think about that? Never been a thought? You're a musician, I mean, real music gonna be around, so it's, you don't really be thinking about it, you know what I mean? It's like I'm here now. Mm. It's not like I'm not gonna stop making beats, and the beats ain't gonna get, they they only gonna get better, they only gonna get more fire, so we, that's definitely not the problem. No, I think, about, I ask that, cause like you think about like, who are some of the artists they said sound same the same now? You heard about um the baby, uh I think that was the biggest one I heard so far. And I was wondering like if the people that make his beats are they losing traction along if people think that he sound the same. Because I'm assuming the beats had to sound the same. I wouldn't think so. You know what mm. I mean? I, he's still around, he's still going crazy. Fifty <laughs> ripped out. It's it's just with that artist maybe, but not an overall sound, you know what I mean? It just might be with that artist. Mm -hmm. And then we don't know what that artist and they got, you know, in store, you feel me, in the stash, so. No, that makes sense. Who you, who is like some of your favorite beat makers right now? Right now? Yeah, give me top three. Excluding I wouldn't say you. right, I wouldn't say right now, but like who I be paying attention to still to this day, like Southside, TM, TM88, uh, Third, hmm. that's a good one. The third one. It's a young dude that just graduated right from college, like last year or something. He popular. What's the nigga name? He real popular. Y'all know who I'm talking about. I said. I don't know forgot. who the third would be. I know for sure the first two, Southside and TM88. Like no question. Mm. Like that's who I was always watching. You feel me? And shit to this day, they still going crazy. And probably. I'd probably have to say, like, probably like a Mike Will or something like that. That's not bad. Yeah. That's not bad. I fuck with, um, I like, I fuck with Metro. Yeah, of course. See, but how could I say, how could I forget Metro? See, now we charge it to your brain, not yeah, your heart. But it's yeah. all good. 
It's your it's an opinion. Yeah, like, nah, for yeah. sure. What nigga gonna get mad because ain't missing him? My top three, like it's my top three, bro. But I uh I like how he did the uh, project when he um he dropped the instrumentals with it. Yeah. You ever think about doing something like that? I haven't. Nah. Oh. I never thought about it. I've always just been like just focus on just the uh, projects with the with the artists. Like, mm. Trying to do like full projects with artists. And that's mm. what like I'm like been on from the beginning. So I'm definitely like on it now just trying to lock in with artists and like just do full projects how do you pitch that like how does that how does that conversation even come like yo like, i want to do the whole project i mean it's just if we already rocking you feel me and we already got good chemistry it's just like why not i'll just i'll just come out and say it like we need to just do a whole project mm. now is that a collab project or is that like yeah, it'd be a collab project yeah so it's like forever rolling and Exactly. Artists. Exactly. Have you done it with anybody yet? Uh, I got one with Anti. Anti the Menace. We just dropped one. Okay. It's I called got uh, Forever the Menace. That makes sense. Okay. That's hard. That's hard. I like that. I like that. Damn. So, when it comes to making these beats, do you? See, how long do you see yourself as this producer, or do you see it being more? Do you see yourself like having? whole albums just forever rolling with multiple artists and things like that i wouldn't say it's like whole albums with everybody it may be cool if i did but be around as long as i can really you know what i mean i'm gonna be around until i can't make beats no more you feel me, so really? you see yourself making beat just making beats forever right now i mean i looked before i before the money i was doing it just to make music you feel me like i love making music mm. so it's like uh, I wake up, you know, it's just what be on my mind, you know what I mean? Like, even if I don't make beats, it's like I'm going through listening to loops or going and listening to old beats, you know what I mean? It's something with music that I'm going to be doing, so it's, I'll be doing music forever, for sure, for sure. So, like, but you wouldn't, I mean, you wouldn't see yourself, like, going to, uh, not DJ Khaled, but, uh, I mean, shit, a Metro Woman wrote, like, nah, for making sure. a project? Yeah, for sure, for sure. But I still... You know, he still made beats on, on his project, you know what I mean? And collab with other, you know, producers and his friends. So I'll always be making beats. I'll be, if I'm here around 70, I'm still going to be making beats. You say that now, nigga, until you turn 70, you're like, I'm tired of this shit. I'm going to retire. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. I was like, what you retiring for? What am I retiring from? Because it's not work. It. Yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> you feel me? I wake up, I enjoy. It's 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 the... The time, the freedom, just mm. waking up and being able to do what you want to do. Mm. Yo, speaking of, like, collaborating and stuff, what was the song that Gotti did with everybody, and he had, like, different beats on it? I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, what was it? Uh, mm, 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 to the front. Was that song? Oh, no. No, I know exactly. Cause it was, that wasn't a song? It was this three different producers on the on the four, four of them. That was on. hard. I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, it was on like, the uh, compilation the flow. album. What was it? The song was called? It had uh, everybody on it. It had. What did you think about that? Was that was that the first time that was ever done? What was the song? Because we got to get the audi audience a song. Think, Let's find a song. I don't think it was the... Uh, I don't think it was the first... Nah, it's, it's like, on that. It's on that album. It's step us to the. It's like like step us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm not. It's on that same album though. It's on I think that it's same, that same album. I can't think of the name of it. Ain't it this? No, it's not this. I thought this had a different beat on there. It ain't first of January. We got to find a song, bro. It was, it was you, hell of a... Uh, it was like everybody, kind of like every artist, produ like main producer. Yeah, me, me, hell of a junior genius, and my boy Flex on the beat. Well, forget it. If y'all see it, uh, type it in the comments. But like, was that your first time ever seeing something like that? that? I never heard nothing like that. I think so, yeah. I've never had, I had never even tried nothing like that, to be honest. So it was definitely new for me. Who I did was that? Gotti. What did, Gotti. You, what did you think? When you first heard the idea, what was the first thing that came to your mind? I was just 
let's let's get it done. You feel me? I didn't know how I was gonna do it, but I mean it's not like it's hard. You know what I mean? Like what I'm saying, like what what was done, but mm-hmm. it was just just putting the the right beat to fit around it. That was like the problem because we did like four different beats to 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 fit with that. You know what I mean? So it was four of them. They was like, you know, try to do another one, do another one. You feel me? So it took it took it like a little second just to like get the right one, but mm-hmm. it was worth it. Cold gangster. Cold gangster. That's hard, bro. That's I never heard nothing like that. That was hard. <laughs> it was definitely, it was definitely a crazy idea for sure, for sure. That was fine. Have you seen anything like? Have you seen like other artists mimic that now or not? Still not to this day. Nah, nah, not yeah. like, nah, not like that. Nah. That was fire. Yo, how you um enjoying this space right now, bro? Like, you here like ten years, ten plus years. You here now? You one of the biggest producers in the game right now. It's just to, just to have my freedom, my t- just time. You know what I mean? That's all I ever wanted was just to be able to do what I want to do. Mm. Just wake up and not have to like. Worry about going to a job, you know what I mean? Worry have to worry about money, you know, worry about paying rent, worry about paying mortgage or whatever, you feel yeah, me? Yeah, you don't gotta worry about paying rent? No, it's like I know I got it, you feel me? I know you like we we straight, you feel me? Sheesh. I didn't put the time in enough for it's like one it's day not, soon. It's not a, yeah, it's not a problem right now, you feel me? What was the most money you ever made on a beat? On a beat? Yeah. It's the most the most we ever did, like twenty five, yeah, twenty five. Up front? Yeah, up front, yeah. You were talking about how you um, producers shouldn't um, charge up front at one point. I mean, like, if you locked in with the artist, you know what I mean? Like, I don't be it's like at the points. charging G, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but not, not for you. You different. At one point, you were, saying, you were telling artists, like, bro, if anything, take the advance and then take the points. I mean, it's, I, was, I was saying, basically, it's like, if you, if you locked in with that artist, you mm-hmm. feel me? Like. Don't be trying to charge that artist no 20,000, 30,000, not even 10, you feel me? Mm. Like, build a relationship, you feel me? Because they're going to come back, you feel me? It's like when you charge the artist, it kind of like push them away if y'all don't got that relationship, you feel me? And make it and, and make it known that this is business and that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, and it's, and it's like they might not come back, mm. you know what I mean? Because just because you're trying to charge... 20, 30, like, you might not even be at that level yet. They might not even know who you are. They just might have got the beat from the engineer and he pulled it up. Mm. Or they might let you, they might let you get off and let, let the song come out and never talk, you know what I'm saying? Never ask for beats again. Then you're just coming around the industry that, you know, you doing this, you doing that. But I'm thinking of, like, producers, bef- like, not on your level, right? I'm thinking of, like, producers, and not that just starting. Let's say that's on a level when you first met G. Because you was hot. You was yeah. lit. Let's say if you're a producer on that, at that at that level, you still trying to you got to make your money. You know what I'm saying? How how are you gauging it? You still say uh, leverage the relationship. But the, the relationship is the leverage. Mm. That's gonna get you the bag. Like if you lock in with them and the project go crazy around wherever you from, you feel me? Whoever else is rapping is gonna be trying to figure out who did the beats. They gonna come to you because that's what was happening. That's a fact. You know what I mean? I was I was making, you know, you know, a little few hundred thousand and stuff, you know what I'm saying, every month. A hundred thousand? No, I'm saying a few a few hundred to a, a few thousand. thousand, to a thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Talk to me like what's going on? Let me know. Nah, so it was like I you know, I was making a little 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 pocket change. So like how much? Like I four hundred, five hundred you know a month saying? or no, no, we talking like it might be Wednesday, I might make five hundred today. You know, Friday I might make another Four, five hundred. I might make a thousand. You know what I'm saying? Depending on what was going on, and you know, I was doing like engineering stuff too. So outside of the engineer, though, that's strictly beats at your peak. Not well. This is your peak, but you know, the producer that's in the hood making Trying it for to figure it out. That, yeah, that 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 peak. Like you, the, you the hood producer that everybody want to go with. You only lock in with a couple artists, right? How much was you making at that point? Three to five hundred. You know what I'm saying. On a good day, I might make a thousand. You know mm. I mean? On a good day, you know, some or I might not make nothing the whole month. It just depends. You know what I mean? But it, it's the music. Mm. Just, just focus on the music. If you can just get past that part, that's just what I be trying to tell like all these young producers. If you can just get past the part of just the money, just focus on the music. The money gonna come. 
Mm. It's going to come for sure, for sure. How do you get past focusing on the money when, like, in a nigga like that shoes, he still got to pay bills. You got to focus on rent. You got to focus on the bills. I mean, it's got to get a job. You feel me? Do something. You feel me? I don't know what to tell. It's like, you just got to stay down, like, regardless of what the situation is. Because I done had plenty of jobs. I'm talking about, like, over 10. Mm. Just, like, have a job for, like, maybe a month, maybe two weeks. Quick. You feel me? Go get another one. I might not have one for a whole month, you feel me, telling my peoples I'm having a job. I'm at the studio every day. Mm. Engineering, selling beats, all that, you feel me? So it's just really just motivating yourself, staying, you know what I'm saying, staying motivated, just wanting to do it. Because mm. you see, like, the metros and the south sides, like, it happened. And they was in the same position once, too. So it was make you just, like, keep going, you know what I mean? Mm. What do you, do you, you have any suggestions or what do you think about, the artist who makes beats as well. What do you think about that? I was a big fan of Nav, so. I was, oh, he was fuck, one of them. Yeah, I fuck with it, for sure, for sure. Damn. Like he made, she make, she damn near all his shit. You feel me? You know who else who do that that I like? Who? Russ. Russ. He is crazy. He definitely got some fire shit. You feel me? And he got like his own sound. Yeah, he is crazy selling off. That shit is crazy. Like that's that's fire though, cause everything coming back to you. No, you ain't got to worry about you feel me. Nobody trying to charge you no know, crazy prices for no beats or trying to clear beats. None of that. It's like everything just in house. You don't think niggas are like again? We talking about coming up. Russ and Nav is out of here. You don't think niggas like look at niggas like that different? Like, bro, you a beat maker or you a rapper? Like they, I feel like niggas always shade niggas like that. Like, I mean, I mean not really, cause I mean if you coming out. And you rapping, I mean, like, who's going to know that you made the beat? Nah, facts. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? Nah, facts, man. So you loving the space. You know, how do you, what do you think about the um, the culture of music right now? How do you like the music now? Be honest, I don't be listening to shit. For real? But I've been that way, though. I've been that way. Like What you listen to, then? The shit that you do listen to? I'm the same way. A lot way. of future. Mm. A lot of future. So I, like, always just been... Future, <laughs> damn. The South Side, that's my favorite producer. So he was doing a lot of shit for for Pluto. So that's all I was listening to. Like I just always want to listen to the beats, try to figure out, like, damn, how do you do this? How do you? Know, so he's doing this like this now. You know what I'm saying shit like that, and it kept me motivated. You feel me? Like the music. Mm. Did uh, Did you ever catch yourself like trying to sound as similar to South Side at all? For sure, especially back then, like. Mm. He might hop on live, start making beats. It might inspire me, like, you know, I just go start making beats, you feel me, once he get off the live. So it's stuff like that. But that's, that come with it, though, you feel me, especially in the beginning, you know what I'm saying? Because that's just, like, in inspiring, you know, where you get the inspiration from when you see stuff like that, you know what I mean? You got to look up, everybody look up to somebody, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying, whatever you're doing, so. How you feel about uh, samples? Mm -hmm, really. Or sampling music? Really have nothing bad to say about it. I mean, like, I sample here and there, but it's just not something I'm really, like, really into. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Some producers be going crazy with it, though. But it's just for my sound, it's like I do it every now and then, but, like, not a lot, though. Mm. But do you think it's, like, it takes away from the creativity? Because it could be a crutch for some people. Like, if you... Nah. No, it's hard. It's, it's shit. It hard be harder to sample sometimes than it is just coming up with regular melodies. You know really? What I'm yeah, hell yeah. How so? Cause it's the chops. You feel me? You get a certain way you gotta chop them. You feel me? Getting it, getting it on time. Uh, finding certain parts of the sample that might not have drums. Trying to get the drums off of the sample. There's a lot of like shit you gotta go through with the samples. Getting the sample clear. I ain't gonna lie, man. That shit making beats look boring as hell, bro. I been in the studio, niggas is making beats. I'm like, bro, what's going on, bro? Like, niggas just be listening to the same thing over and over, bro. I'm like, yo, how do y'all do it, bro? Like, be sad, cause we hear the end result. Cause I know for sure when I when I when I start a beat, like immediately I'm already I already know like the direction. I'm, yeah, I, I hear it. I know how I want it. I know how it sound in my head. Mm. From from the beginning to the end. So wait, give me the process. Get break 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 down the process of your your process of making beats, right? 
where do you start? Like, what's the first thing you're thinking about? Really just, like, airy ambient sounds. I just like real airy sounds. Sounds are like fill up a lot of space. You feel me? Like what? What's that? I don't know what that is. You got to break it down to me. Break it down uh, to me like, motherfucking, um, what, is the, what is the book? For dummies. <laughs> Making beats for dummies. If you had to, you go in the studio, right? The laptop there. What's the first thing you're doing? Of course, turn on the laptop, all that. Bring it up the Pro Tools, whatever you bring up. Yeah. What's the first thing you're doing? Like, how do you find, how do you even find the starting place to it? You just be going with the flow. It's not like you really be thinking about it. I know I don't. But you got to have a base or something, like, found base. Like, it's something that you go to. What's your go-to? It got to be something. I told you. Just be, like, airy sounds. What is that? Like, give it's me... It's, like, a... sounds with, like, you know what reverb is. Yeah, I know what reverb is. It's, like, sounds with, like, heavy reverb on them. You know what I mean? It fills up a lot of space. Because them sounds, like, help me build around a lot of other sounds. Or I might pull up I might pull up loops. You okay, loop. I might okay. hear a crazy loop. You feel me? Okay. And the loop might... I might start adding extra sounds to that loop. Then I might add the drums to it. Or I might not have to add no sounds to it. I just go straight to the drums. It just really depends. Every time you go in, and I, or every, I know every time I go in and I make a beat, like the approach is always different. Okay. Yeah, I see. that's the one thing I did see. I see we was at uh, the studio and they was asking for loops. And then once they got the loops, but it was mad um, producers in it. So like one producer might play the keys, another producer might do the bass. Yeah. How y'all getting paid? For, like how, how is 10 niggas getting paid for one beat when the producer... I heard y'all. What y'all? What's the percent? The producer percentage from a song? You making 50? the beat? Fifty. Fifty. Yeah. So y'all break fifty up in like to ten ways and shit. I mean, I've only had the most I've ever had. It was only once. Was like five people. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And it's you know it's just it's broken up. You feel me? Just split up. You feel me? Damn. Sheesh. And what about the dude that do the loops? Did he get the percentage too? Yeah. Because yeah, like yeah. people be sending y'all loops. Yeah. Everybody gonna get taken care of like for sure mm-hmm. for sure. You feel me? Like that's. You got to make sure everything's, everybody's compensated. Damn, that's crazy. I'm just trying to hear the song. He said airy sounds. Reverb. I can't even hear it in my mind. I'm trying to hear it. I just keep hearing ESTG. I'm trying to think of like, <laughs> like I just keep, that's all I hear. <laughs> that's like ESTG. Bro, I ain't going to, I don't want to say you got locked up, but that, God was on your side with that. What you mean? ESTG. <laughs> God, you can't, boy, it's, it, it's no way as you go one night laying down without thanking God. Cause that boy, am I lying? That nigga, am, I'm lying, bro. Bro, I don't even listen. Listen, <laughs> hit me up. I'm with you. I'm not. I don't like none of this shit, bro. I'm yeah. sorry. I don't. ESTG, bro. No, like I'm not just saying this. Am I? I'm not making this up. I don't <laughs> fuck with niggas, bro. I don't like yeah. new niggas. None of that. Yo, really be on that shit. I just knew this was for the first time. Like we just really like just locked in. You feel me? I just. I knew it was just knew it was I, like a nigga had something for sure. Nigga, you make me want to rap. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> you make like that shit come on forever. That shit go crazy, bro. Like I'm I'm not making this up. That shit go crazy. Nah, definitely definitely got some crazy shit coming too for sure for sure. Yo, so, did, are you like a a naturally like behind the scenes type of guy? Yeah, I don't really be in the mix. I feel like to make beats you gotta be because I'm pissed off. Everybody's singing the lyrics to, I mean, it's 50 50, so essentially it's my song. Yeah. Everybody's singing a song to my, the lyrics to my songs, and they don't know who the hell I am. I'm tight. I better know who the fuck I am. Like, I'm forever rolling out this motherfucker. Like, I mean, I don't really be tripping. I mean, I just be like, really just more happy, like, people like the music, you know what I mean? Like the tag, like the music, you know what I mean? Like my production. It's like, I don't really be caring. Like, people know who I am or what I look like. And I just like put me. I don't really like being around like a lot of people. Or, you seem chill, low key. For yeah, real. you know what I mean. I don't really be in the cameras. You know, a lot of interviews. I don't really go to a lot of shows. I probably only been to. I can count on both hands like how many shows I've been to. You feel me? Of G's or anybody. Wait, what's your song? Can I ask him his song? Whatever. What's your song? <laughs> I'm a Capricorn. Okay. I was. I don't know if that's like some. I don't know if it's no correlation. I don't know. I'm just asking. Nah, I mean, I'm, no a, I'm an introvert though. Like I really be like. Do they say that about Capricorns? I have no clue. You a Capricorn? Like, I know. like being by myself. You feel me? I okay. don't really be around like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, What's like? What he, they say? He, my manager pulled me out the crib a lot. 
What they what do they say about Capricorns? I have no idea. I'm curious now. I'm just curious. I'm be, I'm, I'm be into hard. that. <laughs> I can see that. You say you stuck in the house making beats all damn day. That shit's boring as hell. You gotta work hard. Nah, for sure. Damn. For sure. That's what, so Definitely. I asked I asked Cannon um about like a story that was like super special to him. And he um he told me a time when he first heard Jay Z on this song. Um it was it was the Jay Z and Jeezy song. Um what's the song? Seven? Uh, trap star. Yeah. Yeah. what? Trap star. No, it wasn't trap star. It was um, it was another one, man. Dun, dun, dun. What's the song? Trapstar. That's trap star. <laughs> oh, all right, whatever. Oh yeah, oh, it yeah, is yeah. trap star. Yep, yep, yep. It is trap star. Yep. I don't think that's the one, bro. I don't, I don't think that's the one. That's not the one I'm talking about. Uh, what is it? I don't think that's the one, bro. I'm just saying. That one, this guy, uh, this guy, go crazy. On it, though. Come on, bro. Yeah, come on. This. Uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, um, he told me the first time he heard that he was like, they was on stage, twenty five thousand people singing a song. That's the moment he was like, "Damn, I made it." Yeah. What was your "I made it" moment? When what, what story have you seen it? And he was like, "Damn, this is crazy." I mean, really just seeing everybody. I think it was around, mm, let's say, Lick Back, probably. Mm. It probably would have been Lick Back. Because we had, like, other songs, that, you know, records that was buzzing before that. But Lick Back was just everywhere I turned. You know, everybody was posting it. Uh, for the first time, you know, I'm out here in Atlanta, not from my home city. And I done pulled up, and people was playing that shit at the light. I heard it on the radio. So it was like crazy you feel me just like a like mm. a unreal like moment just like damn you feel me nah if i ever get my lick back that was that nigga. <laughs> that's yo that's a real shit to tell nah, a nigga sure. i will forever get my lick back nigga that's crazy it's one of the simplest beats ever was that is that your hardest beat you think is that your favorite beat nah, what was your favorite beat on on the let's go to it uh did you do every beat on the um estg album the uh what was the name of it What's the name of it? This shit with his shirt. A few since then. What was your favorite beat you made from? My favorite? Yeah, this one. What was it? Bigger than life or death? You did all these beats? Damn near. Did you do? Yeah, what's your favorite? I'm gonna wait. What's your favorite? I don't know. So I don't really be having like a, it's like a favorite. All right, bet. What was your favorite song on here? Um, Bigger Than Life or Death? Yeah. Is I make, know my favorite song. On Bigger Than Life or Death? You said what? Make It Even. Make It Even? That was like, that was the last, that was the last minute song we added. I, we we did that in LA. Make It I Even. I was there for that, for sure. This song, I don't, I might be overlooking it. Oh yeah, this your favorite song? It was, yeah, for sure. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know what my favorite song is? <laughs> that shit go crazy. <laughs> what? Sky Dweller. Oh, Sky Dweller. Oh, I can't oh, forget that, about Sky Dweller. That shit. I forgot about Sky I ain't gonna, Dweller. I'm, I ain't gonna I'm mad as hell. Yeah, yeah. I ain't got a Rolex. <laughs> that shit is fire. <laughs> I Bro. forgot about Sky Dweller. Real shit. Real Sheesh. Shit. Boy, if that ain't the best song on this motherfucker. I fuck with Sky Dweller heavy, too. You made that beat, too? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> this shit go I forgot about Sky Dweller. I, I be forgetting about like all the songs. I ain't gonna lie. If that shit don't make you wanna rap, bro, I ain't gonna lie. Like that shit make me in the car like that make me wanna get this motherfucking money, bro. Like, that shit He make yo, I ain't gonna lie, that nigga make you feel bad if you bro like, he make, <laughs> like if you on your ass, you can't be on your ass listening to ESDG, bro. You gotta get your ass hey, some stupid, money. Nigga, bro. Like, I'm dead ass, bro. Like you can't gotta get up, nigga. You gotta get some money. That shit, bro, that shit was one of the hardest songs ever, bro. Now nah, I fuck with Sky Dweller Heavy for sure, for sure. Nah, you said make it even, bro. It's all good. <laughs> I, I, do, I, I do fuck with Sky Dweller. I forgot about Sky Dweller. Make it even for sure, though. Just because that was some last minute shit. Like, what I was happened? literally. We just. I ain't gonna say the food. It was, it was bro, a, you terrible with stories, bro. If you don't set the story out, man, let us know, man. We try to figure it out so we can. Play. It was, you feel me? It was just a last minute song, you feel me? Uh-huh. We was out there, was, we was doing the. 
was it a compilation? CMG was working on that. Mm-hmm. So it was just and working on finishing that album. So it was just like a last minute song. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So what happened? What's the story? <laughs> I mean, it ain't like no crazy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> It ain't no crazy story, you feel me? You just, don't want to tell me the stories. It's just like how just how it happened. You feel me? It's just all. How did me? it happen? Cause it was that like this the album was done. You uh-huh. feel me? <laughs> Everything was mixed and album mastered. was done. You feel me? He's like, we need one more. You feel me? So I pulled up a beat. That was the beat. It was the first one. Oh, you just one. pulled up a beat. Yeah, that was the first one. You feel mm. me? I didn't have to go through no whole bunch of beats or none of that. Nah, man. I appreciate you setting all the stories that you did set up, bro. For, <laughs> I, for real, I do, for real. You don't do interviews. I like it. I, I'm I'm glad you pulled up. No, he for came sure. out to pull you off to do this? Yeah. He probably was like, bro, we gave him our word, bro. You got to, bro. Like, you probably like, man. He's like, nah, bro. We already said we going to do it. We got to do it, bro. That's how it was. I was, was coming. Nah, I was already like, I'm coming for show, for show. You feel oh, me? Oh, I appreciate it. I just bro. be chill. You know what I mean? I don't. I'm a, I feel like a lot of producers be like that. A lot of producers be wanting to be in a mix. You feel me? But. Mm. Like, I don't be giving a fuck. Yeah, I don't, I, bro, when you see me at All-Star J, oh, shit. Yeah. I told I don't go out, I don't, nah, bro. I don't really rock with everybody, so it's like. Nah. But nah, man, I appreciate you for pulling up, man. Yeah, um, For, sure. for the people that don't you. know, tell them how to follow you and everything. Nah, it's just uh, Instagram's Feverola Music, uh, Feverola underscore music. Uh, that's, really, that's really the only one I got. I don't really be on any other social media or anything like that. My guy. My God, I appreciate you, man. Forever rolling. I appreciate you for having me, bro. Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. It's a wrap, man. We out.